Ain't on you. I said you ain't on mute, are you? Ain't on mute. What's that? You said think about that. Ain't on mute. Ain't on mute. What kind of language is that? Ain't on mute, are you? Ain't on mute. Ain't on mute. I know what that means. What's an ain't on mute? Ain't on mute. God almighty. Ain't Think about mute. somebody coming here, so I'm gonna try to learn English. Ain't on mute, are ain't you? Ain't on mute, are you? <laughs> don't, don't come here if you wanna speak English. I ain't no teacher. English. I ain't no teacher. I ain't no nothing. I ain't gonna tell I ain't gonna tell what Randy's on today. I ain't gonna tell what you're on. What am I on? You bull. I ain't gonna hear it. Mandy said, Mandy. Man, I've called mama, her. I you call, call her, me mama. I call her time. Mama, Mandy, Mangua. God. <laughs> I've got a, a, uh, dot, what do you call it? Dyslexia. My brain ain't dyslexic. My tongue is. <laughs> oh, uh, Lord. Well, welcome to Incredible Tiny Homes, everybody. Welcome. You guys ever watched the Kaiser Report? Never. Alright, Kaiser. K-I-S-E-R. Kaiser Report on YouTube. There's a husband and wife team and he's a money manager something, crypto, stuff. I hardly ever know what he's talking about. But... It's interesting. When I watch it, I'm thinking I'm getting educated. And I'm thinking, I can see I watch the Kaiser Report. I can't repeat what he says. Like, I can't absorb. You can repeat Step Brothers <laughs> and Winnie the Pooh. Well, that's... I understand that! <laughs> And uh, and uh, Talladega Nights, man, you repeat Talladega Nights, can't you? <laughs> the cougar in the car. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and Carl. And Carl. Uh, yeah. French fried hey, taters. Hey. Yeah. <clears throat> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Y'all make sure you check the gas. That's a great point. That's yeah. a great point. I can I do not understand. I'm so interested when when they talk. Yeah. But I really want to know. But I just can't. I just don't get it. It's interesting though. Yeah, I don't either, but it makes me feel like I'm getting smarter when so I watch it. So you tell people you watch the Kaiser Report. Watch Kaiser Report. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, do you watch Kaiser yeah. Report? <laughs> hey, you guys seen the movie, hey. the movie uh, 50, First Day, 50 First Days? Oh, love 50 First Days. Yeah. Um, Drew Barrymore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Everybody's going to have a fit. He's right I, there. I, I, Oh, oh, hey, let's do this. Okay. Let's, let's put some pressure. A hundred dollars for whoever thinks of it. Stop! You keep throwing the money around. Are you ready? Everybody knows this. No. Oh, you mean between two of us? Just me and you. You already know. You just thought about it. No, I swear to God, I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, it's, um, he mm -hmm. played Billy Madison. Yeah. Matt Damon. No. Uh, <laughs> it's, um. He's. Stop. It I've, is not Jimmy Fallon. It's, uh, Jim Drew Barrymore and. and Brad Pitt. Oh my gosh! I can't believe this. You know it. Oof. He knows it, guys. He knows it. I can tell. Tim. No. Fred. No. Joe. No. We'll come back to this. Oh, I can't believe hundred dollars. Whoever thinks of it. We'll first. come back and see who gets the Benjamin. Okay. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta read this, Amanda. I gotta read this comment. All right. Uh, I have oh, not read oh, it. Go ahead. But Amanda, you gotta read this. Yeah. All right. I lo they caught my eye because it says Ram Man. Yeah. All right, Ram Man. I'm like, oh, a Ram. Ram. So like he likes ra uh, dog, a Ram truck. Well, I don't trucks. know. The first thing come to my mind is my alma mater high school was the Rams. Oh, really? Yeah, the Flat Rock Rams. Oh, I didn't know that. I figured yeah. it was a truck. I don't. I don't drive a Dodge. No, I'm saying they're. That's his handle. I don't know. Maybe he shoots Rams. He ain't calling you. Maybe Ram he's a Man. Ram wrestler. No, what? that's his handle. Hey, I bet he takes these rams and wrestles them to the ground, man. You never know. Oh, my God. All right. It said, Randy, please get a shout out. Oh, to the wood shop class. Yes. At Cody High School in Cody, Wyoming, and their teacher, Mr. Collins, who decided this year his class is going to build a tiny house. That's cool. Well, shout out to you, Cody High School and wood shop class. I used to be a shop teacher. Yeah. And, um, ah. Uh, from everything I know now, I wish so much I could teach how to build these tiny houses. Hey, I'll tell you guys, if you're all are watching, I took a high school, four high school boys, and I've mentioned this before. Yeah. But about five years ago, four or five, we went into the big shop out five of Inca. Five years ago. I didn't get to film it, 
but I took four high school boys and didn't know what a saw looked like. They didn't even know how to write the name down, saw. They didn't know it was it is a misfigure come from Mars, we all right? We filmed a lot with them. But that was when I first got, I don't think, maybe one stayed after that. In one Saturday, we framed an entire, the floor system, the walls, and put the roof on. In one Saturday, just four boys mm -hmm. that didn't know how to swing a hammer, didn't know what an air gun was. Oh, can't get this, sorry. I should turn that off. Business all the time. I'm in business. I'm in a business meeting. <laughs> we took four high school boys. And so I think about the one thing that I, I hope that these guys do, and I'm going to read the rest of the comment, but I hope the one thing that I hope that they do is they get it on. They get it rolling because I'm a fast-paced guy. I think, I think building 10 homes is way more educational than taking two years building one. Move, 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 move. You may not get it the first time, but you get it the third, fourth, fifth time. And I know how to make money with these things. If they get it up and gone and sell it, they can fund their class. When I was teaching, Mandy, do you know when I was teaching middle school and high school, do you know what we they give us to buy materials with? How much money the school system gave me? Now, this is 19... I, hate to say it, it's I was going to ask what year was 1988, it. 89, 90... I graduated right. 88. This is a long time ago. But what they gave us is a budget, $250 for a semester. And I had 30 students, and I had five classes. Wow. 150 kids, and I had 250 bucks to teach them whatever I was going to do. Crazy. Anyway, I ended up going to sawmills, and they don't donated wood. It was all oak. It wasn't pine. And they donated me, I mean junk, just scraps and stuff. And I ended up cutting it and getting it going and getting projects going. And I remember the, the principal come down to the shop class and he told me, he said, I am hired you for one thing. I said, what's that? And he said, I hired you to keep, just keep peace. He said, the other two teachers climbed out of the window and they ran to their car and left. He said, these kids are going to drive you nuts. So when he walked by my to class, peace. To just, he said, I don't care what you teach them. Just keep them in the room. <laughs> he said the last class took the tool crib and took all the tools out and sprayed graffiti all over it. Is that not something? Anyway, I had the class for about a month. And he come... What, what grade? Now, this was middle school. And I had a class for about a month. And he walked by my door. And he looked in there and he looked. And it was quiet. There was nobody. It was, they were all being studious reading their stuff. He didn't, I could have been teaching them anything I wanted. It, it, it didn't matter about woodchuck, nothing, man. It was just quiet. And then he come back about probably another three weeks after that, and we were down in the shop. I had every tool, every saw, every, everything running at one time. 30 kids, they were running, you name it, any kind of saw, lathe, and everything else. And he said, oh my God, the liability here. Oh my God, the fingers, everything, the blood, and everything. I said, ah. They've all been taught. We're good to go. And I said, let them run, man. Oh, my gosh. They were all good. They were standing in line about every single... I mean, we had kids standing in line at saws building the things that I had them building. Anyway, it's just it was fun teaching. I enjoyed it. Um, well, that kind of sounds like... Well, let me ask... And I know you need to finish reading yeah. that because you want to get it... We want to get uh, the full time to them on their, uh, their comment. But that sounds like that's when the beginning of you salvaging stuff because you built a house. You know house. what? It is, isn't it? So that was the first time you really salvaged, and then you I never thought of that. that with your house as well. I just, you know, I just make do with what I have. I've never had enough money to say, hey, I'm going to go to the bank, I'm going to borrow $150,000, and I'm going to build me a gorgeous house mm -hmm. with crown molding and beautiful doors and windows and painted, and I'm going to sit down in my beautiful bed that I bought, you know, whatever, at a furniture store. Never had it. I've had to just create things. Right. And... I don't know. It's, it's always been, you know, I always say, hey, I'm physical, 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 right? Well, I would love, and I, I would love to uh, manage, you know, like you've got contractors that drive around and they manage and it's wonderful. That's, that's awesome. Um, I just, for some reason, I never had the, I never had that, that uh, push to get into that step to where I had enough money mm -hmm. to do it. I remember there was a young kid and his dad was a developer and they were wealthy and he wanted to do what his dad was doing, buying, selling land, building homes. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I said, hey, buddy, this is when I got into carpentry and stuff, out of teaching. 
and I said, hey, I'm going to give you just one pointer, even if you don't, eat, if you want to listen to it or not, grain of salt. I said, but you got a lot of men out here that you guys are employing. And I said, I think it would be good for you to get on a framing crew mm-hmm. and just work with these guys. Listen to where they're from. Listen to what they're doing. Listen to the lives they live. And, listen, and, and feel the pain, the morning crunch of the snow that they got to get on a job site. Feel the heat in the summer when they're framing up on a roof mm-hmm. and they got to stretch and pull and they got a ladder that's almost falling out from under them. They're hanging on with their hands. And just think about if you could be a part of their life just for a month or two. I said, the insight that you will have, and I think it'll change your way of thinking, the way you're building and the way you're just, you're looking at this entire industry, you know? And I didn't know if he had done it or not, but you know, he, I, I think, uh, what was it? About a year later after that, I ran into him and you know, he said he did that. He, he, he got on a he job. Yeah, he got on it and he learned it. And he said, I really appreciate you giving me that, you know, that boost. Mm-hmm. I, I just seen him because he was so talented. He was a beautiful looking guy. He had the world by the tail. And I said, man, I think you need to get down to earth and get down in that trench because he'd never had to, you know. Right. So, you know, that was cool that he did that. Um, all right. So I was started over from the beginning. All right. Said, Randy, please give a shout out to the workshop class at Cody High School in Cody, Wyoming, and their teacher, Mr. Collins. Howdy, Mr. Collins. Hi, Mr. Collins. Who decided this year his class is going to build a tiny house. My daughter, Rachel, was selected to be in this class. Oh, good. Selected. Isn't that cool? She and I watched many tiny home shows for years, now which have influenced her to pursue this career after path, career path after she graduates from high school. Oh, wow. All right. Here we go. We got some recruits. I think it should, I think it would be so cool if you could build a tiny house for one student who you selected to come live on the ITH community for the summer and you and your staff help them enhance their skills so they can go on to build tiny homes when they graduate. Mm-hmm. Mm, I like that idea. Yeah. All right. I would love for my daughter, of course, to teach me what she learns so I could help her start a business and see it grow. That's great. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, we got our partnerships and... I had, we had them young kids before, remember, and, and the church company said, well, you can't, hunt, you can't hire them because they're too mm-hmm. young, and I was like, bah. <laughs> I didn't listen to them. All right. You never do. Who knows? Maybe one day we will have an ITH expanse in here in beautiful Wyoming. I really hope you read my comment. Well, I just read your comment, and you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe. I have had a massive interest in Wyoming since I come across it last year. I come across I-80 when you come out of when I got in that snowstorm in uh, Green River, mm-hmm. and I got in the snowstorm in August. I think it was. It was August or September? I can't remember. First of September, I got a snowstorm, and then it was 80 the next, you know, four days later. But anyway, I wanted to. I, I drove across that country, and of course, I-80 is a really lonely stretch of Wyoming. And you know, you go up in the northern part, and you got Jackson Hole, and you got the Tetons, and and all that stuff. But my mom and dad moved to Wyoming in 1947, mm-hmm. 48. Wow. They drove to Wyoming and lived in Hannah. Okay. I don't know why I remember that. I mean, I remember stories when I was a little boy. And they moved to Hannah and they said all it did was blow the blow wind. It was this constant wind blowing. But dad worked under the, under the ground in the mines, but the mines were 40 foot coal where he was used to two foot coal. Yeah. So he had to crawl in here but wow. down there they had 40 foot coal. But anyway, I've had a love for Wyoming and I've been thinking about some developments and I've got some ideas that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, educating myself on developing land, developing homes, develop on a, on a really uh, a different scale of not normally doing how everybody does, all right? To keep the costs low and, and uh, so I've got some really cool ideas. So it's really unique that they would call or text and, and watch the show and be a part of that in Wyoming. It's something how it all starts connecting, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I love that state. I was watching. I read up on it, and they said that I think Wyoming is the least populated state in the country. Yeah. Is it? Uh-huh. And there's, like, everybody there is, like, everybody's got four point square, four miles per square person or wow. something like that. I don't know. But um, that is cool. I will definitely keep this comment. I, yes. I wish you could email us and let me know. I'd like to maybe further 
our discussion mm -hmm. and like to see what they're doing, the tiny home they're building, and if there's anything we can do to help them. Sure. All right. Murphy Kemplin. I live in Missouri, but looking to Tennessee. Can you do an ESP home like an RJO with no stairs? We have it on our books. It's 19.9. That's an RJO home, 19.9. With, yep, for um, just like what you're looking for, man. Full kitchen, is that an bathroom. ESP or is that it's a... an ESP. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, BB Darling, are there storm shelters close by for when this tor when the tornadoes hit your area? No tornado, no storm shelters. I've lived here since '87. Manda's born and raised here. She was, she's been, she was born in 1954. So she's, oh, so try again, brother. Try again. You jumped on that, didn't you? Try again. How many tornadoes you seen here, Manda, since you've been living? Zero. Zero. Since I've been here since 1987, I've heard of one. They got some supercells that jumped across here a couple of years ago and tore a tree down, but. We don't get them. I think the no. mountains bounce them off. Uh, you know, that, but so. this, that's East Tennessee. Uh, West Tennessee, they get them. They get them. Nashville might get Nashville, them sometimes. Things like that. But East Tennessee, we don't get tornadoes. I remember when I first moved here, and I told this so many times, but uh, when I first moved here, a local guy told me, he said, listen, Tennessee doesn't get the best and doesn't get the worst right. of any weather. Mm -hmm. it's been, I've been fortunate my whole life. So. Yeah, when you guys think about Tennessee, I remember when you all watched Hee Haw and stuff, and you watch them guys laying down. They got them old coon dogs, and they're all just laying around doing nothing and on the front porch and got, you know, drinking yeah, moonshine. Yeah, their overalls. Yeah, their overalls. Do you know why they do that? And they may have done it here. They call them hillbillies. And my, my family are a long line of Southerners here. I was the only one born north and came back. But the fall and the winters are so beautiful here. They they're are. so temperate. And so it just gives you this relaxedness here. It's just like relaxedness. Wonderful. Relaxedness. I created a you word. Created a word. I created one yesterday. What I was that word? I can't say it. Oh, can't. That's Remember? a dirty word. Yeah, it's. Uh, I created a dirty word yesterday. <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's move along. Move along. Move but it along. does. It okay. just. It just like. I don't know. It's Fisher just. It's nice. If you go to South words. Carolina, it's just too darn hot. Oh! And bugs. Oh, it's hot there. And there, you go to North Carolina, it's the same way over that way. It's just something about this. North Carolina's nice. It is pretty. It is nice. It's cool, too. But you go up high. If you go up high. But it'll get too cold in the fall. I'm just saying. There's this. I just love East Tennessee. I just think oh, it's I a beautiful place. Lisa Lee, hi, y'all. Realistically, are you still thinking the mountain property will be ready for us at the beginning of the year? Or are you thinking March or April? The reason I'm asking is because I need to coordinate the sale of my home, so I won't need to rent. Thank you so much for all you do. I do not. I do not think it'll be ready the first of the year. Mm -hmm. Y'all probably be done digging and all that, and I can't predict anymore because the way the engineering has to go to the state and with the state, if they're backlog passing the sewer, the pipes, the there is just so much that has to be done to be ordered. I'm ordering it all. I'm researching it all. I'm getting it all, everybody. Um, we still have to go down the road with the sewer line, bore under the road, then go up into there. we got to install a tank, a pump, a system. Um, the county right now is overloaded. Now, we do all the work, but they install the, that one pump, and if they do that, um, they are backed up. I just went to the attorney's office yesterday, and they said that they are still closing properties from out of town people buying property here. The electric company's backed up, the water company's backed up. They don't have enough people because they've never had this kind of growth in Cock County. Never. Cock County has just been dead. Like yeah. since its existence. Mm -hmm. It's never had anything going on. And they're really stressed out down there at the electric company. They are. Yep. Um, so I'm sorry, I wish I could predict. I will give you updates as much as I can and, and try to look into it more mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I am, I am also a new resident, Shonda Jones from Georgia. Hey, Shonda. Said, Shonda actually came in last week. I wasn't able she to. She was here and gone, and I didn't I get didn't to get see to, her. I didn't get to see her, no. I said, her, it's, it's, uh, I miss my son. It's her thing. Brought yes. a check as well. Randy, is there a possibility that you can update on the homes that are with the Amish? That'll be great. Uh, thanks, Becky and Will, an amazing showing properties. You guys made me feel totally welcome. Good. Shonda, they have four they got her ESP home, and they got four of them up there. And I just talked to uh, David. He's the he's overall the Amish. He's he is Amish, and I talk to him every morning. 
and uh, they got about 11 homes up there and four of them are the ESP. Mm -hmm. Well, they framed them, dried them in, got them set, the roof on them and everything, and then, then they moved on and give them to another guy up there that's gonna trim them out and everything. And I told him, I said, David, we need to get those done because the one person that was doing them, I showed him how to stucco and trim and wire and we got all that done, but then he, his dad, has gotten cancer. And so they have been going to the hospitals and hospitals and it's slowed down. So David, I said, I need those ESPs to be taken to your other men and we need to finish them up. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an exact date update, so I will get that. I'm supposed to talk to him in the morning and we'll try to get those going. And two, and the Amish are not starting new houses. None. They're, I'm not getting them anymore. And they're going to be bringing all of them back before they start. We won't give any more homes until those homes are done. Correct. Yep. Uh, Sylvia Torres. Hello, Randy and Amanda. Yes, Billy Joel was born in the Bronx, New York. Grew up, grew up on Long Island. They call him the Piano Man. They do, and that's what my friend said on there as well, um, Robert. Is that he said that he was born in the Bronx, 1949, and that's when my dad was born. Was 49. And that's something. I never looked at Billy Joel the same age as my dad. Really? I do now, but I yeah. didn't then. The Bronx. Yeah. Country gal. I think George Jones' daughter is named Georgetta. And I think she's Georgette. right. Georgette. Georgette. Yes, I believe that's right. Nanette, do you have any anyone building in Central California partnership? At one time, you said Fresno. Did that ever pan out? Um, no, we don't have anybody. I want somebody in that area. Um, Fresno, I think I mentioned, because I had heard that they allow tiny homes. They've had that for quite a while, that Fresno was um, welcoming tiny homes in there. Mm -hmm. That's a big area I want to hit, and I'm hoping to get more out that way. Mm -hmm. um, Susan Ganos, Ganos, Ganos. I have a travel trailer that isn't built as good, as good as your incredible tiny homes. It is two years old, and it is falling apart. Two that, years old. That's interesting, yes. And falling apart. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know them travel trailers, I hate it, but they, they don't, they just... They're not built to last. Wow. You know, our homes are. They're like regular homes. So, um, Catherine Green, what would it cost to reproduce Bitty Bohemian? Which was Pam's. Is that Pam's? Pete's, yes. That was just an RJO. Cute little house, yes. RJO. 25? Mm -hmm. Yep, they painted it. They did the painting and but everything. But it's, it's a $25,000 house. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Cute. Yep. And Susan Gunnos again, I miss Travis. I do too. I know. I hey, know. Travis. Our live shows. So, all right, let's stick with the comments. Yep. Yeah. Good. And that finished up. That was just one night of comments, not even all of them. That was because we had 177 at that time comments. That was like two nights ago. Yeah. Amazing. So thank you all for, for commenting and for asking questions. And uh, we'll try to keep up with those. I just couldn't believe how many. Every show, honestly, now could be a whole show of questions. It's wow. Crazy. And I hope yeah. it's it's entertaining to watch to read these comments, you know, and talk about them. Amanda, I gotta do something for the Cody boys. Yeah, you gotta do something. Cody High School and Cody Wyoming. Are you gonna do a cheer? I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you one thing you gotta do. Every time you guys start your class. Mr. Collins class. And Mr. Collins, you gotta get these boys. We had a welding we shop. Go. We had a we had a welding shop back in uh, Flat Rock High School. We were the Rams and uh Every morning, he made them do deep knee bands. I mean, they did 50 air squats. You know what I'm going to do. I you know. guys have to do this before you start every class. I should do it before and after. We're going to do some chair push-ups. Okay. Right? Let's do 20 right here. Here, you get your feet up in the air. Look at this. Wait till Travis sees this. Travis, he's like, oh, really? He's rolling his eyes. Oh, like, really? He's rolling his eyes. With really, me. Randy? All right, uh -huh. ready? Go. And you go, one, 20. Five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Every day. Every day. Now, what I'm going to ask of Mr. Collins in his class, I would like for someone to send in a video of everybody doing the 20 push-ups. Yeah. Send it to us, okay? And we'll put it on yeah, here. Yeah, so we will show everybody. That would be really cool. you got to do them. If you guys want me to come out to Cody at Wyoming, show you how to build these things, Yeah. we got to have some push-ups being done. Oh, I want to go to Wyoming. You're not going. I'm going. I and wouldn't that, take you with me if you paid me. Well, I don't care if you take me. I just want your money to go. <laughs> That's 
it. Man, you make is everything. Is that where they do our show? Is that where our show is? Kevin Costner. Where do they Ooh, do? They I do don't know. Montana Yellowstone. Or? Is it Yellowstone? Do they? So the movie, Ye the the series, Yellowstone. Oh yeah. With Kevin Costner. Is it in Wyoming or where's? I heard. They say they're in Wyoming, but it's in Montana. It's in they Montana film it. I can't they, remember. That yeah. They film. yeah. Yeah. Let's go look at some tiny homes. I'm ready. All right. Should we show what's in the fridge before we leave? Second, second. Same moves right here. That's right. That's, that's it, right there. Signature dance moves. Yeah. All right. Look here. Let's show. We have Satan in our refrigerator. The Satan couple. Listen, they bring this. You got to show one of. Okay. Them. So look, I've got my. Here's my good stuff. I got my watermelon. Uh huh. And I got my mushrooms. Uh huh. I got my almond milk. Yeah. I got my organic lemons. Okay. Yeah. I got my sweet taters. Now show what Dave and Karen have brought. Kringles. Oh my God! Look at this guy. Danish Kringle. Pecan Kringle. They brought like five of these. Four or five. It's sit. It's just Satan. What's that? Raspberry Kringle. Oh God, Karen. Uh, and I put them right on top of my blueberries and dates, Amanda. Oh, I can't. Oh. We here. gave... Um, There's more Kringles. Mark, come over here and got a couple of slices. Harvest. What's a Harvest Kringle? He about, oh, I want a Harvest. Here, what does you, that mean? I don't know. Let's see. And then you got a Wisconsin. Oh, don't put it on the floor. It's about ready to come out. Oh, and then there's God. another one back here. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know. Birthday. Oh, I want to buy it's it. It's all that pretty colors and stuff. Oh, on my there. gosh. Okay. Oh, and they put it right on my watermelon. Well, it's on. Put it on top, Randy. Put it on top. Yeah, on top. Yeah, on top. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Oh, my God. Somebody's been nipping on this. Oh, gosh. It's open on both ends. Somebody's been nipping on it. Here, let's show you what it looks like. Uh, which one's that one? Harvest. This one was a harvest one. Let's see. What, what's harvest? Oh, my like? God. Half of it's been harvested. Like, well, gosh, you got to keep an eye on this fridge. I ain't worried about it. Oh, is it a pumpkin? So, this is a Kringle. Is that what... Oh boy. Taste that. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Ain't hey, nothing but the devil. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh Lord. All right. Oh Lord. Shame Look. on them. Right, this is where you can get it. Mm hmm. Right here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, I wanted to tell you. Boy, it'll set you straight. Set you straight? Mm hmm. I could dive into that and come out next week. <laughs> wow. Mm -mm -mm. Don't need that. So now I'm going to make it right with the gumbo Oh, stop it. That'll treat my stomach. Stop up. it. I want to hear you. Mm -mm. Stop. I can't drink that kombucha. It tastes. Ugh. It ain't good. It's too carbonated, too. Yeah, I'm trying to get from a good help. Okay. Good uh, gut help, man. Okay. Eat you another Kringle. Let's go. <laughs> you I want key to get in? Always. We just right. call a pocket knife. <laughs> I want to show this container mm -hmm. of what, what we did. We've got a sofa mm -hmm. in it, and I'm gonna, we are not completely done, but I wanted to show you kind of what it looked like. Okay. And we're going to show Karen and Dave's house tomorrow. That's it right here. They're here. They just got here. They went through it. They hate their house, but we're going to show it tomorrow. <laughs> You're awful. Yeah. It's not true. All right, so this is a 20-foot container. Mm -hmm. I wrapped it with wood. I think I'm going to call it woody. Oh, there you go. I it, love that. Like the old 19-whatever. Yeah. They had the woody station wagons. Okay. Yeah, it's, there you go. See how it's so low to the ground? You can put some surfboards on it. I'm going to pull this. Cody, Wyoming. You know okay, what? I'm going to stay out there with the boys and okay. do some tiny home building. But I got a water catchment. I've never done one on a container. Mm -hmm. We are putting gutters on Michelle's and Joy's house on their container. Okay. She had. They both have some leaks coming in around some openings. And I think it's just because of the water that's coming down the sides. Excuse me. That's making me burp. Um. They're crowned a little bit, so the containers are crowned, and the water comes, the water does not come off the end. The water only comes off the sides. Huh. So we're going to run two 40-foot uh, gutters, and we made our gutters. That's our design. So in the front, it goes flat, but we put a V in the flat of it, so it gives it some rigidity, and it doesn't wave. Okay. Because if it was a real long, 
we had them before with with not a, a v in it uh -huh. and it kind of looked floppy okay so we've up you know we learn stuff constantly nice. yeah so we can what i'm going to do is have this catch the water have me a big 500 gallon barrel mm -hmm. so i can catch my water and i'll be drinking and using my water so i don't have to drill a well wherever i go i'm gonna put a compost toilet in it next thing is i just need a gas stove for my cooking mm -hmm. and i may get a gas refrigerator i'm set good all right come here so I'm, these are the doors. So these are the cargo doors that we framed in and made to look wood. And it'll, they'll stay open. They're fixed. They're fixed. Ain't going anywhere. We actually hooked the deck to the bottom of the cargo. Mm -hmm. So this is a fixed deck, and it made a wall. We made this little opening. We put crates. You can put flowers or plants or something in there. Mm -hmm. Put a roof on it. Made a rubber roof going across the top. Yeah. And then also put a plug above the door so we can use some rope lights. I think that, and it's switched on the inside. Okay. So if you go on the inside and put some rope lights, you can turn them off and on. I think it'll look kind of cool. Yeah, it'll look you know? very cool. So Rob has built a sofa in here and I just wanted you to see, um, Paula Jackson over here is actually upholstering it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did part of the upholstery and then she's doing the cushions and uh, she's got half of it done. So look at this sofa, Amanda. There's no electricity in here yet. Oh, wow. Look at that round. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. see it better than the light. Oh, yeah. Wow. Is that not cool? That's beautiful. That looks beautiful. So this cushion will come up, and there's storage underneath here. Mm -hmm. Right? And they, he upholstered the front of it. So what happens is this cushion will come out, and then you take this cushion and put it over here, and then the, you shove this one back, and it exposes this much. Okay. And then I can... Well, let me show you what we do here. Yeah. Supposed to, take, supposed to take this out, push that back, right? Then you can take the bed. And I made the bed really narrow. So I, I, I think Rob came up with a good term. He calls it the suitcase. Okay, that's a great term. Suitcase Murphy bed. And this is a piece of scrap we had, but he had a cool idea with it. So you pull this down. I don't have any hydraulic jacks, anything. So I just made this so I could handle it. Look how that tight that perfect. fit. So now you could take, you take that one, right? I think or this one might be too big, but he made it so it'll fit right inside here. Okay. So now you got like this whole thing is a mattress. Wow. You know, it's a big bed. So it's really a king. Mm -hmm whatever More size it is yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but now you could either have your the head of your bed here now mm -hmm. you know if you had a tv against that i was yeah. thinking about if i recessed the tv in the tv in the wall i would you could fold it up on it sure you know but this is it and it's only four inches thick of foam mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, a firm foam i used to have a real soft foam i don't know for some reason it just made my back hurt a little bit yeah so I'm going to a firmer foam, but I only wanted it for because I didn't want that bed sticking out too far and makes you feel small in here, right, you know? Right, right. But that's it. Oh. Well, and that's not bad, too. You know, I was thinking about the couch going up over the window, and that's not bad at all. It looks nice. It does have back to it. You have to have a comfortable place to sit. Yeah. So you take this out, which will be cut to fit. But I think, I think this is scrap. Or, no, she's making a... She's okay. making a wrap for okay. it, a cushion cover for okay. it. Okay, well that's nice. Yeah, you just take this, push it back up, mm -hmm. and it's out of the way. I love that. I'm talking, the bed is made, done. Mm -hmm. You know what? Cool. Pull this cushion. I'm not one for transforming a home a lot because I think it gets old over time, you know? But if it's just a couple cushions that you got to do. Yeah, that sets it for the day. Yeah. Look here. Mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. Perfect. Full sofa mm -hmm. in this house, man. Yeah. A full sofa. And he's put wood to trim around like underneath it too, like under your, right there. Yeah, here? Mm hmm Yeah, and that's the storage underneath it. Nice. Very now, nice. Now, right behind you, what you're sitting in, they don't have the doors on it yet. And I told him, just go ahead and get it done. This can have two doors. Mm -hmm. So this is a closet. Yeah. You can hang clothes in up here, which I don't have any hanging clothes, but 
I got hanging clothes here, a shelf, and then you got two drawers. Isn't that nice? Cool. Yeah. And I think Gloria sent you some handles. I actually sent them back to her because they had her name on it, but she said she gave them to you. Okay. Yeah, All right. So that's where they went. Yep. So, living room, bedroom, armoire for your closet. I'm going to put a coat rack here, put my boots in here as soon as I come in. I can kick off my dirty boots, hang my coats and stuff in the winter, whatever I'm doing. And then I'm home, man. You know, the only thing I'll probably trade out is put a gas stove top here. Because when I go off grid, I'll have me a gas stove top where I can cook. I don't have to have, you know, I won't have too much um, solar power from back in the woods. Mm -hmm. You know? And then my water will be ran by a, just a little battery pump. And then, of course, I've got a tankless water heater. And you got a tankless water, I'll take that out and put a compost, and we are set to live off grid. One thing I'm probably gonna do, Amanda, in that corner where I said I'll probably put a coat rack, I just remembered. I'll probably get a, a wood pellet stove. Okay. A wood mm -hmm. stove, and I may have it up high or something like that. And then I'm gonna mount up in these corners, I'm gonna mount some fans. Because you've got to keep your air flowing all the time. You've got to circulate that air to keep it cool and warm. Because, you know, hot and cold rise and sinks, you know. Well, in the wintertime, could you close in the porch and actually put the stove on the porch? I mean, you could. To have extra space? Sure. Yeah, there could be a whole other room out here. Mm -hmm. That could be your stove room out here. Yeah. Put a stove right here. Yeah. Close it in and blow all the heat inside. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea because you just have to put whatever you put there. That's a good idea. I mean, so this right here, you figure you got a roof, you got walls, you got a floor. All you need is this back right here. You close it in and have another room if you wanted it. But I, I like, like it. I like what Chef David and his wife did. They had a little, I thought their, their porch was beautiful. Yeah. They had a stove outside on their porch. Yep, yeah, sure did. But this one probably could heat the house, you know. Oh, yeah, but heat everything. It's just a small area. So this is a 20-foot container. Mm-hmm. All right, and we have a four foot porch on the back of it. The thing about containers that I love about them, of course, this was covered with wood and it just almost defeats the purpose of having a container, but we had to do this because it had been remodeled and had, we just, we've remodeled this, this is our third time. Right, We're right. done now. Mm -hmm. We've learned what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. But if you get a regular container and you don't paint it, you don't do anything, a container home with the right procedure can go really quick. You know, you frame it, you spray foam it, and you're done. You know, you mm -hmm. put your V-groove and stuff in it. So you don't have to put siding. You don't have to put a roof on it and metal on it. So now how will you access the roof? If I want to, I, I just have to get a ladder. I don't have a built-on ladder to the side of the back of the house. Yeah. I thought about putting a deck up there and some railing. But um, you can. You can just put a, get a ladder, go up there, and yeah. you can put chairs. But you there. really can't stand on there. you got to build a deck. That, oh, you have to build that a deck. That roof is not built to walk on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you want to walk on it, you got to build a build, build a, a deck on it. Yeah, deck. sure do. Okay. So anyway, this is a... It's beautiful. What is, this, what is the color of the stain? This is a Sickens. It's S-I-K-K-E-N-S. Sickens stain, and this is a teak color. Teak. This is teak. Teak. We, for some reason, we love the I color teak. I think that's what they're going to put on theirs. It's they teak. want the same color on theirs. Yeah. They sure do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we got the downspouts, the gutters coming across, tying in for a water catchment. Yeah. Sure it is. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's 8 by 20. Yeah. It's a 20 footer hooked to a truck and head out of here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. So that's really like an R, like an old RV mm -hmm. if you think about it, you know? Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. Nice. Let's go inside. I want to show you one okay. more thing before we go. And, um, and we will show their house tomorrow. Yeah. Just, just standing here. Flat log siding mm -hmm. and metal right here. Yeah. All right, cedar shakes, half log, mm -hmm. and then you've got your um, LP siding, siding, and you got solar. That's an off-grid home. Mm -hmm. Now we got an we got a ESP um, tongue box. Mm -hmm. We just need to stuck away. We're trying to find the right color to match that house, and just right here, and you got an ESP here, mm -hmm. cargo, cargo container. Mm -hmm. Look at this one here. You got the the uh, Hobbit house with all the vines on it. Amanda, Everything different. that is one, two, three, four, five, six homes within this circle Just right here. that is 100% opposite of one Correct. another. Now, I have a question about the solar, okay? Is there any way that you can do a decorative solar roof that's just, you just sit it down? 
You just sit it on there. Well, you know, you could use the Elon Musk um, shingles or solar shingles. Okay. And build it, and it's the whole the whole, the whole roof is, is, is solar. That's, that's what I was thinking, because I really don't. I, know, I understand that, but I don't like that. But I'd kind of like to have a uniform whole roof. So the whole thing's is pretty. The whole and, thing is pretty, and it's all solar. The whole thing. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of, because those are panels, and you got to, and you can't cut panels to fit, and all, all right. that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> okay. It's good. Okay, I didn't know we had. That's great with the shingles. What kind are they? Don't know. I, I've never installed them. I haven't researched it. I just remember hearing he had solar shingles, <coughs> and they're not asphalt shingles, of course. They all got wires, and, they, hooked, great idea. and they hooked to each other, you know? So, the, that means if you could have it as shingles, you can have siding that's solar. Oh, yeah, right? everything. I guess you could. Yeah? You want it kind of pitched, you know, I guess. I see. It's okay. the sun. All right. All right, let's go. And still, yet again, that is not the cardinal tank. <laughs> it's, it's still there. <coughs> Neat. Yeah. Well, they got me fired up, man, about Cody, Wyoming, I swear. Oh, yeah. Got me all, yep. I love challenge and love the new stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all quiet. Well, I didn't hear it. So quiet. I don't know where Ace is at. <clears throat> like, so I covered up the skylight, so it's dark on this side. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So Mike and Chuck has not been working on this house today. They were outside working on Cardi's house. Uh, Cardinals. Car I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Cardinals house. This one, we started putting the first coat of green. This is Mila. So Mila, we do have yours going. That is a beautiful color. Yeah, yep. So we put a couple guys on here and get this thing rolling. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you got white, pretty. green, and, and the berry. Love it, metal. that looks really pretty. I remember, you know, when you do anything decorative, I think you told me this or something, you gotta have three different colors, I think. You try to mix three colors. And that's what she did, white, green, and berry, you know? Mm, good. Beautiful. All right. The one I was going to talk to, you know, you wanted to show one, another one. Oh, we were going to do cardinals. Yes, we'll do it tomorrow. But I want to show this one here tonight. Mm -hmm. And this is a big 10 by 26. We call it a freedom style. Let me show the side of it here. Yep. Bart's okay. overseeing this. He's doing, doing a really good job. It's almost done. We had Matt frame it. Bart has um, trimming it, siding it, putting the, he's put all the uh, cedar shakes on the gables and the dormer. Oh yeah. You know, a lot of people, is beadboard on the ceiling uh, like a traditional kind of thing? You know what, it's, a it's, long time ago, didn't it? it's just, yeah, kind of nostalgic of older homes older would put homes. beadboards on it their ceilings. Beautiful. Yeah, and sometimes we don't even have it in stock. When we have it in stock, we use it. You know what, our, and you saying that reminds me of our customers, Amanda, mm -hmm. because none of them, hardly ever, out of the 700 some odd homes we built, requested beadboard no. or anything. Mm -mm. And they, they accept what we put on it. Yeah. And, and I'm, I think that's just such a cool thing. Now think about yeah. this, we're building custom homes, but we get to kind of do some, some things on our own too. Something, yes. Mm -hmm. And people have the majority. We've got some customers, you don't do that. You know, they specifically wanted certain things. But 98% of our customers mm -hmm. are so appreciative and want us to do, and a lot of times, if, if the customers let us kind of do what we mm -hmm. want, they end up probably getting 20% more than I what know. they expected. Because yeah. the guys love what they do. you like to be creative. That we love to do something a little bit different, you know? Mm -hmm. Like this window here is a picture window. So this is for some people. This is a glass, just a piece of glass, right? It's a thermal pane, insulated, low E glass that I get a great deal on. I just buy all the remnants from a glass company. So what we do is we take this, these, this is our trim board. This glass is pushed against the trim. So that's actually the stop. So what we do is we put the siding on, we put the trim on, and then when we set the glass, we just smash it up against the trim. And this has got a slight angle to it. So when the water hits this, comes down and comes off of it mm -hmm. right so on the inside we'll trim it out with nice trim it's called the jam um, and then you know then we do the fascia and all that stuff on here the face part of the of the trim you can look how big this window is I mean inside it looks bigger than from the outside Wait, isn't that pretty nice. yeah so this is the living room mm -hmm. exterior door gonna have a deck out here 
She's going to have a deck on the end, deck, deck wrapped around. Her yard will be out that way. Mm -hmm. Kitchen over here. And then the stairs, of course, are going up here. The one thing that we always want to, to say, because this house is 10 foot wide, it accommodates steps really well. Mm -hmm. So you can think about these steps are here. If, if it wasn't 10 foot, Amanda, the steps would be here. Okay. And look how close they are to the kitchen, which we've done hundreds of homes like that. Right. That's why you don't want them in the living room, because if it was in the living room, here's your steps, and then you, that's all you have yeah. for a living room. Right. Other thing is, we've lowered this down. Now, this is called um, an easy access, mm -hmm. right? Bedroom up top. So when you come up, this is lowered down. This is about 60 inches. To here, normally is about 80. She lowered her loft height a little bit, as you can see coming in. I'm a little guy, and I'm every bit of what, eight foot four? And this is, a, you know, it's almost hitting my head. It makes me feel really tall, man. Yeah. Well, I bet it does. I'm almost hitting my head I mean, on the here. The ceiling's right there. I bet you I mean, I'm like, tall. hey, what's up, baby? Oh, wow, baby. What's up, baby? Can I help you? So and then, why did she lower it? So she could have more headroom okay. in her upstairs. Her yep. Normally, we get about 43 inches, and she wanted to lower down about four inches. Mm -hmm. So, no problem. Well, Custom I mean, home. You're not going to grow anymore. So, it's like, why not just have it I know, I'm shrinking. exactly what you need? Uh, we shrink. We shrink. We I'm going to build a house for the future. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yep. Okay, but think about this. Now, I'm going to, before I go into the steps and you've wandered into the bathroom, I'll, ah, I'll point something out. All right. So, this is where she'll be walking, mm -hmm. right? Really, it'll be under, it'll be right here. This is the floor height. So, under mm -hmm. here, this is a beam to carry your weight. She can walk all the way across here, right? And sit down on her bed right here. Mm -hmm. And that's what's kind of neat. It is. So when she gets up, she can actually sit up in bed and put her feet down and stand up mm -hmm. and just walk and go down her steps. Go down the stairs. Instead of, you know, scooting on your butt, crawling mm -hmm. across the floor, going down the ladder, or stairs, and all that. Mm -hmm. All right. So underneath here, of course, is her toilet. And we've done this before. The toilet comes out to here. As you do, look, I'm going to. You miss your head. Go. Mm -hmm. Nobody reads the paper anymore. Do Nobody you? does the paper. No. You got your phone. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get my phone. Mm -hmm. Slide. Read the no, the news, and all that stuff. All right. The shower. Let me show you something. This is something technical that you've got to remember if you do lower your ceiling. I don't mind a lower ceiling in the bathroom. It's kind of nice because the steam, the heat. Everything can be vented out, windows. It gives you more room up here. You're only in here for a certain amount of time, right? But the thing is, is your shower. We had to cut the bottom of the shower off to lower it. And normally, your shower head comes out along the side. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't give you much room for a shower head. So if you come out with a shower head and then it angles down, it's gonna be really low. Yeah. You know, normally a shower head's up another couple, three uh, or four higher. inches. So you got to contend with that. So, so think about. So what's she gonna do? I don't really know what he has. I don't see the shower head in here. He hasn't installed it yet. So he's he's got to go on here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not bad. You can put it on here, but to trim that out, because you got a discussion, the pipe, mm -hmm. and everything to come out. But right here will be your controls, and probably your shower head here, and this right here will be the side where you can access it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what's this gonna be? This right here is your washer and dryer. Okay. Yep. And, and then over here will be, so she's got the toilet, then what, what will be? Toilet, vanity where you're at, mm -hmm. or half moon sink. I think she's getting a vanity. So that can't be too big of a vanity because you can't, mm -hmm. if it sticks out, you don't want it, you gotta get in your shower. In your shower. Mm -hmm. So that's why she, I think she's got a square decorative ha um, wall mount sink. Okay. I can't remember. So toilet. Over here. She has a dresser here. Okay. And that's why she wanted a window, some light Maybe in her here. Clothes and things exactly. like that. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, her home she has now is beautiful. It's so warm, a lot of personal portraits and paintings and memorabilia from her travels, you know? And I'm sure this one will look every bit of that. Mm -hmm. So now the stairs, when you walk upstairs, if you wanted a normal staircase, which is about seven and a half inch rises, so you lift up your foot seven and a half inches, your tread are 10 inches. When you put your foot down 10 inch treads. Mm -hmm. On a residential, I like having 12 inches, right? So you come on up here, this is 60 inches, you get about, this is the eighth step. So you wanna go seven steps this way. If it's 10, 10 times seven, 
you're looking at almost 72 inches, which is six foot, which is about, I don't have my tape on me tonight, about here. As Soon as you take two steps up, you're at 15 inches higher off the floor. You gotta remember your headroom, all right? So let's say you don't want that dormer to be any more out. I don't want the door to be any more like that. You crunch it up, then you gotta raise your risers up to maybe eight, eight and a half inches. And what I found really interesting in the IRC or the ANSI and NFPA code, they allow you to have almost a 12 inch rise, Amanda. That's like a ladder. That's a lot. Yeah, and it's a, so if you go 12. That's a big step. You can go with a nine inch tread. I think the, common, the, the, the cumulative measurement is 21 inches rise and, and tread. So if you go 12, you gotta have nine, but you can go up. I mean, it's just boom, 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 boom. Wow. You hear that rain? It's four in the rain. Wow. I hope oh, that's the last of it. That sounds so nice. We haven't gotten a lot like torrential rain from that hurricane, but we've just been kind of steady drizzle. And I'm so, just really quick, I know you're talking about something, but really quick, just be sure to look on our Facebook. I posted the pictures of Glenn, of French Quarter. Oh yeah, okay. And the preparations that he made for Ida and his house, the 8x28 made it through the hurricane. hurricane a, a cat for Hurricane Ida. Four hours, 140 mile an hour gusts. Isn't that crazy? Amazing. That's cool. So look at our Facebook. Those pictures are on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyway, there was some other technical things here I wanted to point out to you. I didn't get to go with Bart. He was telling me about like right here, we're, we're going to put a uh, a girder. Well, it's really a uh, collar beam. Okay. So it'll go across here, across like here. that we did at Cardi's. Yeah, this is more so of a... Decorative? Yeah, this one's more decorative than that one. This one could actually be structural because mm -hmm. it's more in this open area. It really just needed one, but it looks better with two. She probably wanted two, so we put it up here. Sure. Once those are up, the the uh, trim is just a matter of trimming out the windows. And she's got a garden window that goes here, mm -hmm. which I think is really nice. Um, super expensive. She she got a deal on one, but normally they're about twenty five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. It's a big sets out things set your your plants in it you know so but this is a custom home all right it's a it's a freedom home with two dormers so she paid for an extra dormer paid for some you know the extra door the extra um picture window mm -hmm. and the siding and the you know the cedar shakes and a lot of things she's got a lot of custom kitchen cabinetry she wanted a custom wall up, up top here yeah, for her bedroom and doing, closets she's not doing the matrix cabinets no this is probably about the last house we were doing because we sold this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll be doing the cabinets for her in here. Mm -hmm. So, all right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show, the comments we read at the beginning. And, uh, and a shout out to the Cody High School and um, Mr. Collins Mr. class. Collins That's class. That's the wood shop class. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you guys. Hope you guys keep us posted of a video, um, some pictures. We'd love to help you guys and broadcast that out and keep cheering you guys on. Um, I hope there's sometime I hope there's a way I'd love to come out and visit and see you guys your progress if I could ever get away from here a lot of things going on everybody it seems like the whole world is coming to to grips with tiny homes we've got investors calling us you wouldn't believe the residual income that people are using off these homes I encourage you again please look at our website look at our prices a gentleman just asked about an RJO out of ESP panels you go to our website, it's $19,900, and it's a complete home out of ESP panel homes. A regular stick built um, RJO is $25,000. If you go in and you buy an ESP and you put some love and attention to that thing, think about, look everywhere you can and try to find a home in the country that's $25 and under or $20,000. See if you can find that. You're not going to find it. Not one that has a kitchen, bathroom, nice flooring, metal roofing nice windows brand everything new. you need a brand spanking new on a brand new trailer out the door you can live in it forever and never mm -hmm. touch it if you don't want but if you enhance it with a little bit of love a little bit of attention to to some wood details and trim you're going to turn a coin on that you're going to make money you can actually buy our homes we have several out here people are selling their homes and making a profit off of our homes i mean four or five already flipping their homes big money. I'm talking good money. So 
Think about that. If you got any money like that, we're getting some calls from investors. They're seeing it. These people have got some money. They're trying to put some land development, put tiny homes on it. That's why we're trying to hire more guys to build these homes. I think we've just started this business. I think so too. You know? All right, buddy. Have a great night. I'm Randy Jones with incredible, credible, credible, credible tiny homes. Credible tiny homes. Bye. And oh, you give me the finger, Amanda. Look, made in America. Right there. Hundred percent. USA. It's Proud. American, it's American dream. American dream. Dusty Woes. Dusty Woes. Dusty Woes. Woo! The new. Well, just off what you said. Tiny Rick Blair. homes are the new American dream. Tiny homes. Incredible tiny homes. Incredible tiny homes. Only incredible tiny homes. Only. Is the new American dream.